Sela Goods Act terms the seller must follow and this video is mostly about what can a buyer do when a sale goes wrong due to wrongs done by the seller so in the sale of goods act uh, we call it as implied terms of the sale of goods act where the rights are included let's have a look at it so the first thing a little bit of an introduction sri lankan sale of goods act is completely the same with the english sale of goods act so english law is what we follow in sri lanka with regard to sale of goods and you know UK one is 1893, Sri Lankan one, Ceylon then, followed in 1896, there were some changes later, but both the acts are identically the same, except for few things. The difference is visible here. Uh, the satisfactory quality is what the UK law talks about, but Sale of Goods Act of Sri Lanka talks about the merchantable quality. That's the only key difference in the both the acts. And, yeah. So, how do we make a sale of goods contract? You can make it written, yes, but you can make it verbal. You could make it implied. So, all that means we can make a sale of goods contract without paper documentation, without signatures. We can make a sale of goods contract. Yeah, let's focus on the main element of today's lesson terms that a seller cannot break, we call them implied conditions of the sale of goods act. Take a look. When you are the seller, you have to have the title to sell the goods. Without the title, you cannot be a seller. And then whatever the description you give with regard to the goods, it shall be true information. Then when you sell a particular good to another person, to the buyer, it shall be of merchantable quality and just fit for the purpose. And that's where most of the challenges come for us. And a sample provided in a sale of goods contract before a bulk, well, the sample has to be as good as a bulk. And not the last one, if any one of these terms are broken, the contract can be stopped by the buyer and he can return the goods and ask for compensation. There are implied warranties as well. So one is the buyer shall have the quiet possession of the goods. That means once the buyer buys the goods, he shall not be disturbed for any other thing by the seller or anyone else with regard to the goods. So the quiet possession is that. And once the buyer pay for the goods, he pays for the goods and that's it. He shall not be required to pay any further payments. Shall be free from any charge or encumbrances is that. Let's take a case. We'll be discussing a lot of cases today. Okay, remember, thief has no title to sell. No title, you can't do a sale. Check the story. A kind of steals B's car and then uh, he gives the car to C and then from C to D to D to E to so car passes on. That's what the thieves do. Okay, one fine day the police comes up and find the car in the hand of E. And when they find the car, it's not that difficult to identify the owner of the car. They hand over the car to B. Then what about C, D, E, who were honest buyers of the car when they bought the car from A, C, or then when D did from C and E from D, they did not know that it was a stolen car. But do they have any right? No. A did not have any right to the car, so he cannot pass a good title to B. Sorry, uh, I'm sorry, uh, C. The one who bought the car. C has no ownership. That means D has no ownership, meaning E has no ownership. No ownership. A seller can pass only what he has as ownership. We call it Nemo that caught down habit. A did not have any title, meaning A could not transfer the title, meaning C, D, or E did not have title or ownership to the car, meaning B still have the ownership to the car. So that's the meaning of you know unless the seller has a title the buyer cannot get the title that means you know the buyer even if he is honestly paying money buyer will not have the ownership it comes from section 13 title take a look at this seller must follow buyer's instructions to the letter so when buyer 
wants to buy something the buyer may give clear instructions to the seller and the seller has a duty to follow it take a look at the case please tins and b uh, tells a exactly how the tins should be packed in boxes and each box shall contain this much of tins maybe let's say 25 each or maybe 40 each so that's the instruction given by b to a well a does supply the correct amount of tins but the number put in each box is different when a wanted 30 b put 25 or something i'm sorry when b wanted uh, 25 a put uh, some other number that's enough for b to cancel the entire contract because the goods did not correspond with what B described to A, what B told A. As a result, B had the right to cancel out the contract. Number of tins are same, the bulk, but that doesn't mean how they should be packed. Well, A did not follow it. That's section 14 for you. Goods shall correspond to the district description. Now take a look at this. A ordered a foreign refined rapeseed oil. Look at the picture from B. It's a kind of a good oil from B. And uh, B uh, gave a sample to A. And A was happy with the sample. And B wanted, uh, sorry, A wanted the sample to be, you know, get the, by, back by the bulk. And when, then B gave the bulk also. But then only A realized but the sample that B had given was not the correct rapeseed oil. Now what? B has given A the sample and the sample matched with the bulk that was provided later but the sample that B gave A was not rapeseed oil sample. A had the right to cancel the entire order. So B cannot, you know, do this. And A has all the right to cancel it out. There's this particular section called Section 15 in the Seller Goods Act. We call it fitness for purpose and merchantable quality. So when I buy a good from a seller, it should serve both these purposes. Good shall be fit for the purpose as well as of merchantable quality. Let's take a look at this one. Yeah. He buys a bottle of milk from a manufacturer but after drinking the bottle of milk and he dies later investigations finds out that the bottle of milk sealed at the factory uh, was contaminated with a typhoid germ this is a case from 1905 a long time ago uh, case name is frost versus Aylesbury. and then the case followed now a is dead then the a's estate filed legal action against the manufacturer there the manufacturer proved in the court that their manufacturing process was state of the art right but the court was not happy court simply said this typhoid germ was in your bottle so your bottle of milk was not fit for consumption as a result you shall be liable no matter how many steps you take to take care of the production process is not the legal answer that's needed the legal requirement is okay making the product fit for the purpose and milk was not fit for consumption so uh, the estate of A was able to claim compensation from B. Yeah, now when you, when you buy second hand cars, we think all right, we can't fight any legal actions on it because a second hand car is a used car, years old. What about it? Look at the case. So when I buy, buy the car, it's 82,000 miles, pretty much done. But after I buy the car, I could run only 2,000 miles. Engine seized. Engine over. Then I take legal action against the one who sold the car. I win the action. Fitness for the purpose. Anyone who buys a second-hand car and gets into trouble could use this case. If it's not fit for the purpose, that means, you know, within 2,000 kilometers means just within a couple of days, within three weeks. So defect in the car identified within a short period of time with short amount of work soon after the buy, even a second hand car can be fought for.
in a court case. Title. You know, the seller, the purpose is a must. Take a look at the case, please. There was a fabric. Uh, B wanted the fabric, so A, you know, uh, sold it to B. But, uh, you know, the fabric was not fit for making dresses. So B was upset and B wanted to file legal action, but there was a problem. When purchasing the product, B did not tell A for what purpose is he going to use this uh, fabric. When B gets a title, B did not tell for what purpose he is going to use it. So A did not know that. What A gave B was not good for the purpose for which B was going to use the material. But A did not know that purpose. As a result, B could not win the legal action against A. The court found that the material is good for other purposes. And the court said this is merchantable quality. It was not good for the purpose that B bought it for, but A was not told about it. So whenever we purchase something, especially a high value product, it's our duty to inform the seller for what exactly you're buying it for. It's a must. Let's say I mean, I'm having a factory and I'm buying some fans. So there are industrial fans, typical home fans would not work for uh, the factory setting because such a place would require the fan to work for maybe 10-12 hours at a stretch continuous. A typical home fans will not do that. I should tell him for my factory only the fans are. Then seller would know to give me the correct advice. If I don't rely on him, then it will be difficult for me to win the legal action against the seller. Buyer should be aware. If the product has problems, seller cannot sell them. Now take a look at this. I ordered uh, milk from you. Okay, you see, I mean, and what you did was uh, you basically sold me uh, Nestle milk. I didn't ask you to sell me Nestle, but just told you to send me milk cartons. You sold me Nestle by removing the label. And later Nestle find it out. Nestle is world's biggest food manufacturing company. Now the milk is with me. Okay. Nestle threatened to take legal action against me. Do I have the right to Nestle packets now? No. You have done a wrong thing by selling me packets of milk by tearing off the brand name. So that's a trademark violation. When you do that, I have no right. I try to take legal action against you. Yes, I can take legal action against you. Yes, I asked for milk. But what you gave me was milk produced by a different manufacturer by tearing off the labels. Nestle has the right to take action, so I have the right to take action against you. So, though I bought them, though I have the title to them, but because that, uh, you know, now Nestle can take action against it, I have no quiet position. I have the right to take legal action against you. Look at this one. When you are a manufacturer, when you buy from various purchases, right? Imagine that when you are a restaurant, you do buy from various people, chicken from one place, eggs from one place, oil from another place, flour, sugar, beer, liquor from other places. Customers come to buy uh, buy those products or use the eat the food that you are made you made out of those products. If the food was bad, if those ingredients are bad, can you escape by telling I trusted them to be, you know, proper suppliers to me, so don't take, don't take action against me, I'm not liable? You cannot say that. When you are a seller, when you buy various products from others to supply to the others, seller has a duty to check that those goods are proper in merchantable quality. Seller cannot defend himself telling, I thought they were a famous supplier, so I should not be checking them. So if something goes wrong, don't blame me. A seller cannot say that.
seller is liable this is the case all these cases can be used in Sri Lanka in Sri Lanka most of the buyers do not know their rights this one there was this reaping machine right Kangavena we call it in Sri Lanka right and um, I sell this kind of a machine to you telling right uh, it's one year old and used for only for 50 acres of good as fresh brand new almost you believe me and you buy it and after that you find out that actually I haven't told you the truth can you stop the purchase and return back the machine to me and demand compensation from me yes why my description was wrong if it was only one year old and used for only 50 acres it should be a good machine in your hand it wasn't the case I have given a wrong description so because of my wrong description you have not specified the goods that means you haven't bought the correct good so you have the right to return the goods because there was no sale because for the sale to happen goods must be specified because of my lie to you and because you believed my lie you could not you know specify or ascertain the goods so there's no sale I should be returned the particular machine and you can demand price as well as compensation from me. this is the case seller has to be very careful of what he says take a look at this You wanted to buy a catapult and I show you the sample and after looking at the sample uh, I give you another one uh, from the same lot for you to buy but later you find out what you bought was not good because it wasn't as good as the sample so I showed how it works and all that but what I gave you was a different one normally in a shop it happens right when you go to the electronic shops and all there's goods on display we call it the what you call the sh uh, I mean the showroom items where they play it and delete it and show me but when they sell the product they sell me a packeted packed packaged product which is not even opened and if there's a problem in that product the sample they showed me was a different one right I can take legal action here yeah? sample was correct but product I got was wrong can take legal action case is this can be used in Sri Lanka all these cases when the buyer relies on the seller let's say the buyer tells everything to the seller and then what does the seller do I'm a wholesale buyer and you are the seller of material I want coating material for coats and you uh, provide me with the sample and I check the sample and I find the sample to be okay and then you give me the content and the content you gave me the coating material that you gave me was as just like the sample but the material was not good enough for the courts so I still have the chance to take legal action against me because what you showed me is not something of merchantable quality although the buyer was given the sample to check and although it was a defective sample remember a buyer cannot check everything when you look at it just because you accepted the sample and just because you tell alright give me the bulk that doesn't mean that you cannot take legal action here yeah, when the buyer depends on the seller when the buyer relies on the seller seller has a duty to give a product which is fit for the purpose and that is of merchantable quality here the buyer tells the seller I want material for coats you know stitching of coats so the sample that the seller was given by the so the buyer was given by the seller has to be that high quality he gives the buyer a poor quality one buyer 
happens to not to notice and not to see that not to identify the poor quality of it so later when he got into trouble when he tried stitching the coats still the buyer has a right to return and demand compensation from the seller that's the thing take a look at this seller failing to check what he sells I'm a second-hand car dealer and I see a newspaper advertisement about a car and I go there and I purchase a car for the purpose of selling the car to someone else so I buy the car after seeing the newspaper then I sell the car to you telling you right this is a Herald convertible adaptable white 1961 twin carbs so I'm just a buyer for the purpose of selling I didn't check the quality of the car I'm just a seller right and then you believe me when I tell you and then later you find out the car was actually bulky that means some parts of the car actually belong to a pre-1961 model we call it bulk heading the cars happens in Sri Lanka you stop the car sorry you stop, stop the car contract telling that I lied to you I tell you that I did not lie to you what I told was what I believed to be true I honestly believed that uh, the advertisement was right these were the things that I saw when I bought the car and I trusted it and then I sold the car to you saying the same things in the advertisement I didn't have the time to check whether they are true or false none of them would be okay you have the right to stop the contract and you have the right to demand compensation from me because when a seller tells things to the buyer whether it's innocent or intentional or careless seller has to know what he sells he must be fully aware of what he says he can't say I'm just a wholesale buyer I'm just a buying and selling guy none of them will be okay for the courts Casey Spiel versus Taylor take a look at this this is a tricky one a lot of Sri Lankan sellers do this I sell a painting to you by Gabriele Monte painting like this and I'm telling you right I'm not an expert on this particular thing but I believe this is a good one but I can't be sure up to you to decide Sri Lankan sellers do that a lot right so you believe what I say and you buy it and later you find out that actually the paintings are forgeries can you take legal action against me answer is no because when I sold them to you I told you I'm not exactly sure I can't hundred percent say if a seller says that he is not sure, never buy. Because if something goes wrong, there's no chance that you can win the legal action. You buy something only if a seller gives a guarantee. That means seller is certain about what he sells. Sri Lankan sellers do this a lot. Telling that they are unsure about it. They can't say for sure, right? All that. And if you trust uh, them to be honest and, you know, got into trouble, there are the seller has given a right description right I'm not sure I don't know I can't say for clear I just bought to sell you decide then if we make such a purchase and we get into trouble there we cannot take action against the seller because he told the truth right take a look at this a pretty interesting case this one I go to a shop and ask for a hot water bottle and then you give me the hot water bottle and you tell me uh, make it a boiling water don't put boiling water into this so I take uh, I take the bottle home and people at home put uh, boiling water into this and the bottle gets destroyed burst and one family member actually the wife gets injured as well Can I take legal action against you? Yes. Can I win against you? Yes. Why? When I come to you and tell I need a hot water bottle, you should realize that, you know, the bottle should be something that does the normal thing. What is it? Putting hot water as well as the boiling water. Just because you told me not to put boiling water is not enough. A typical hot water bottle is used for hot water as well as boiling water. So there, 
when a customer says hot water bottle you have the duty to anticipate that I may be meaning boiling water as well so there the product that was given by the shop was not good for the usual purpose remember that not okay for the usual purpose what's the usual purpose for which you use a thing like this hot water as well as boiling water so a seller cannot sell a lower quality product and escape liability he would be liable the court would want uh, the typical buyer to be served with a product which is normal or usual in the sense fit for the purpose look at this I am the owner of this particular road marking machine and it's my machine I have the patent to that and I sell the machine to you you buy it you buy 10 machines from me later I sell the patent I own for this particular machine to someone else now what can you be the owner of the machines no when I sold the machines to you myself I could uh, pass a title to you because I had the patent now after selling them to you I settle the patent to somebody else now now are you the owner no you're not the owner you're not the owner now because you lose the I mean you don't have the title to use it because now the patent is not in the hand of the person who sold it to you you lose the title you don't have the quiet possession you can return the painting machines and demand compensation from me take a look at this you can't always blame it all on the seller that's the thing called buyer beware there was this particular case where I go to a, a vehicle selling place and I wanted to buy a trailer and this particular trailer I bought had a faulty coupling coupling means the connecting part of the trailer to the vehicle and it's outside and it's very visible right I buy it and when I was using the trailer on the road and the trailer break free and it goes and hits another car actually it kills the people in that car and there I try to take legal action against you for goods not being in merchantable quality the court said no court simply said I could have easily seen this particular defect it was outside I was careless in my purchase and I could have easily noticed that the coupling was wrong and when I was using it something goes wrong remember I cannot win the case this is what happened the court simply said yeah the trader was wrong in giving you a product with a faulty quality but the buyer could have easily noted that the product was faulty whenever you purchase a product and if the product is bad never keep on using it then you lose the right to file legal action the moment you file that the product is bad what do you do stop using it return it demand compensation otherwise not possible to win the legal action so we call it buyer beware so all the cases that you discussed today are for the purpose of buyers benefit not for the seller's benefit but remember if a buyer is a careless person then there's nothing that the court can do right buyer has to be careful just think about your homes per year you'll be spending at least 1 million rupees on purchasing various goods how many times we get into trouble because of we were careless at the purchasing point or how many times we get to the get to trouble because the seller was wrong for us we don't take legal action of course because the price is not much but whenever we buy a big buy several thousand rupees we have to be careful the purpose of these cases is to make us aware that yeah sellers rights exist but buyers do have far better rights than the sellers in the sellers sale of goods act it's only up to the buyers to utilize them that should be the case